Hey guys, I'm going to introduce what today's drawing project is, and it's going to be really fun. Um, I went to the uh, zoo and I took a whole lot of photographs on my phone of all these beautiful um, parrots. And so I chose this one picture of the Scarlet Macaw, and we're going to be using um, some of the photo reference from my trip to the zoo to create this um, drawing here of this macaw. And uh, that's a great idea for you too. If you have a phone, you can always go ahead and take photographs of things that you really like and then create drawings from them. You can even work from your phone. You don't have to necessarily get photographs like I did. So um, we're going to now just begin working on the foundational drawing and the materials are really simple. You just need paper, pencils. I also like to have a tissue or a paper towel on hand for doing some techniques and of course you might want an eraser as well. Alright, so the first stage is that you're going to want to go ahead and create an oval shape um, for its head. Now remember that you do not want to press really hard with your pencil. You actually want to go very softly because we will be erasing these lines and sometimes you make mistakes which is what happens all the time you're going to need to make a little adjustments so just press as lightly as you can I am pressing harder than usual because I'm doing a video and I want you guys to be able to see the lines on the camera so just keep that in mind then after the head we are going to go ahead and move to the body which is actually another oval shape it's long and skinny kind of like pointing downwards there we have the body all right and then we also want to go ahead and draw in the beak now the beak actually points downwards so I'm going to create these lines on either side and then I'm going to make a curve that curves all the way in do you see that and then I'm going to do another little line that goes across here and then a line that comes down. This will connect the head with the body. The same thing on the back of this uh, oval shape. We're going to do a little indent, a little curve that goes in and around. So now you can see it's already starting to look like a parrot. And of course, we want to make this little shape here, this little interesting shape that is kind of like a patch around the eye of the parrot right in here and then one circle in here and then another circle inside and then a tiny little circle inside and I'll show you how to work with that later but basically three circles because one is going to be our highlight later on and then the next thing that you're going to want to do is I'm going to move my paper up a little bit so you can see on the camera here and that is you want to do another curvy shape here and this really is just to indicate where the wing is going to be and the wing actually juts out just like this two little lines and then of course another little kind of v-shape and then two lines here one here and one for the tail now one thing about parrots is they have these really long uh, tails so if your tail goes right off the page don't worry about that you just make it as long as you can just make it go right off the page that's fine so you really are just focusing mainly on the body two of the parrot and then the next thing we want to do is also indicate where its claws are so these are like these little curvy lines and then also underneath here because it's actually holding on to this little um, wooden stump or a branch big thick branch okay they love to perch on things like that so in here we just have some kind of wiggly lines and another one here that indicates where the branch is and then we'll also make part of the branch go this way okay so that really is sort of our main basic block in um, before we move into shading in the next video what I'd like you to do is make sure that after you get your block in you're going to want to take your eraser and erase some of these really dark lines or lines that maybe you don't need before you actually start the shading process so we're just gonna um, move on to the next video and I'll show you the next step so now we are ready to start shading and you're going to want to take a sharpened pencil for this and um, we're going to start just shading a little bit underneath 
right in this area here and you can see I'm just going backwards and forwards and then I'm going to go the other direction remember when we were talking about cross hatching and really what that is is when you create strokes that are going this direction and then you basically go the opposite direction and you kind of layer right on top of what we already shaded that part of underneath the bird's chest right there and then also down below here. So we're starting to bring um, sort of build up some value and tone right over this area and then also I'm just gonna create some more strokes going this other direction but I'm not gonna cross hatch over here and then I'm gonna come back to the edge and I'm going to go over the top with one more layer, kind of one more pass, just building up some value. And see what this does is it kind of creates a gradation where it's, and this is also what helps get the illusion of light and shadow on your drawing. Do you see that? And then I'm going to press down a little bit harder right on the edge here, just creating these strokes that are going down. I'm also resting my hand and my wrist and actually my arm also on um, my table and that really helps me get really nice even strokes so you want to practice doing that. So it really is, has a lot to do with how you hold your pencil in terms of being able to get a nice even gradation with those pencil strokes. So there we are just building up that first initial place of um, light and shadow right underneath there okay and I'm going to switch my pencils out you might need to do that from time to time make sure that you have a nice sharpened pencil because that will give you a nice even stroke and then I'm also going to create some other strokes going this direction directly underneath the parrot's neck because that's where there's going to be more shadow right underneath that area okay and also you can take some of your paper towel and I like to put it just over my finger here and then start making circular strokes and I'm going to smooth out some of those strokes now what I like to do is maybe just smooth out a little bit just this area here kind of softening it but not too much Okay, because we still want to leave some of this nice dark area. Okay, so once we've done that, then we can start moving over into some other areas. And now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm actually going to create a little bit more of a larger shape in here where I'm outlining it directly underneath the eye next to the beak. And there's an area on the parrot here where it's actually very, very dark. So this is where we get an opportunity to practice doing some of our strokes where we're going to create more of a darker value. Now I'm also now switching over to making little circular strokes and pressing down with my pencil really hard. And the reason why I'm doing that circular stroke is because I want to get into some of these little tiny areas so and then just going backwards and forwards always resting part of my hand on the paper that really helps a lot and then right under here so there we are we already have this contrast of this really dark area now the other place that you're gonna wanna um, also put uh, some darker value is right around the bird's eye okay and so I'm just gonna show you here on the camera I'm gonna enlarge this a little bit so you can kinda see with more detail what I'm doing okay right up in here so um, we have two circles and then I'm actually going to draw a tiny little circle right in the middle of that eye and then I'm going to press down really hard and kind of color this in feels like you're kind of working in a coloring book really just really working on building up some of the shade around that eye and to see how now I press down really hard and that makes the bird's eye really stand out and that's really important because some of those little details are what makes your bird really come alive when you start adding things like the eye gives it a lot of character okay and I'm going to switch over my pencils right now and I'm going to show you how I'm just going to shade 
a little bit going backwards and forwards right under the eye kind of makes that pop out a little bit and also we're going to work on the beak now we're going to move down and I'm noticing here that the beak is black on the tip so you're going to once again make some circular strokes and just fill that in with some dark value now this is where the gradation comes in where you're moving from pressing really hard filling in the tip of the beak because um, parrot this particular parrot it's a macaw it does have a little tip on there that is very dark but then we want to shade the rest so we want to move softly backwards and forwards we don't want to press down hard anymore because we're making the gradation from going from dark to light and so that means we only press going backwards and forwards really soft so you can see how now we're already working on the beak and its face is starting to really come alive all right so we're now going to move down into the feathers here we will come back and do a little bit more detail on the head um, in just a bit but I'm going to show you how to do uh, the feathers here so you want to make these little shapes just like this now mine obviously I'm going to press darker because I want you to be able to see uh, the shape that I'm creating now some of these little uh, feathers are in the front and I'm going to show you how to um, make these look like they're overlapping this one is sort of underneath so really this is a curved shape that comes up and around just like that see that and then there's another small one right here this is a way that you can create realistic feathers on your bird okay and then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna start shading really half of this feather and then I'm gonna move to the next one I'm gonna shade half of this feather going backwards and forwards I'm kinda pressing with um, more I'm not really going hard or soft kinda medium okay so and then we'll go over here and we'll shade half of this one and then also half of the other feather so that makes it look like they're over um, kind of overlapping each other and then we'll also work on this one here just the same kind of U shape just think of this as a U shape and then this one over here we'll start drawing in this one we'll kind of do a little section of these at a time and then here comes another one, another U shape. And then some of these are underneath. See that? And then this one goes over here. I'm going to switch my pencil out. I always like to use a sharpened pencil. I feel like it really helps a lot. Okay, now these feathers um, have some interesting markings on them. And we're going to study that. So what I'm going to do is just push this up so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Just shading one side of this going backwards and forwards okay we don't want this too light or too dark like right in the middle there we go kind of medium all right now right on the end of these this is where we're going to press hard because these parrots have these really interesting markings right on the tip of each of these feathers and I'm just pressing down hard and this creates some variety okay and then I'm gonna make these other little U shapes these one aren't quite as long and really I'm just pressing down and then lifting up pressing down and lifting up for some of those feathers right in here and then a few more because that's really what feathers are like they're sort of like tiles on a roof really and here's some little U shapes this time I am pressing kind of light for these ones that are on top because some of the feathers um, ha are longer and they kind of stand out and some of them look a little bit more fluffy so that's why we want to press softly for some of those feathers and then we're going to go ahead and create another one in here and why don't we go ahead and just shade half of the feather just going backwards and forwards there we go and then also some in here, some more U shapes. All right, that's looking pretty good. And then these ones are the tail feathers, so they're longer, kind of long, skinny U shapes right in there. Okay, so we're gonna move this up so you can see what I'm doing here. Just creating these ones 
right there. Okay. All right. And for those, we're going to do the exact same thing when we just take our pencil and we shade half of that feather so it all connects really nicely. There we go. Okay, I'm going to switch my pencil out again for a nice sharpened one. And then we are going to push down and lift up. And on each of these feathers, we want to create a little bit more interest on these. If you look at a feather up close, you'll see there's a little line in the middle. So that's what makes these look more realistic is when we start putting a little more detail on some of those feathers. And then on top here, we're just going to take our pencil and we are going to move backwards and forwards kind of softly. We don't want a really dark value on top. We want it to look lighter. So I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm being very gentle with how I'm laying in some of this shading. Okay. All right. So that's all we're going to do for this step before we move on later on and we'll work on some more detail. Okay, so now we're going to move on and I'm going to be shading right underneath this area and here just going back and forth with some medium value tone right in here. You can see I'm just moving my pencil backwards and forwards and then over the top I'm overlapping some of my strokes now and I'm going very very soft I'm slowing down and what that does is it gives you a subtle gradation between where it's kind of like a medium value and it's going into light and that's what makes things look three-dimensional. Now we're going to move over in between this little area where we see the beak and its head next to the eye and I'm going to use the side of my pencil again and just go backwards and forwards and I'm going really slow this time because I want to get into that little crevice area and then I'm going to also press kind of hard right in between. There's a little triangular area right in here. So there we go. So you can see it's starting to build up some um, dimension around the eye area and definitely right underneath the bird's neck in here. It's going to definitely be darker. There's usually a little shadow underneath the neck, so I'm going to go backwards and forwards and I'm moving kind of slow and pressing down just a little bit more. I also want to come in and fill this one little area. It's like a little triangle um, at the base here, or actually the side of the beak, and it's darker in here, so I'm going to move my pencil backwards and forwards and kind of press down a little bit harder because we want to darken that area of the beak. Okay. Um, all right, so we will now start moving over to this part here, which is actually, um, here's its little chest, and then we have these two areas, which is part of the wing behind. And now I'm going to start shading and going backwards and forwards just filling this area in. So every shape where we're shading, think of it as a little part of a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, and I'm going to move my pencil backwards and forwards, just filling in that area. I'm going to move my pencil down, kind of on its side, and just shading in. So there we go. So it's really starting to take on shape now. And then we want to start moving down to some of these parts of these feathers here where we want to give a little bit more um, definition. So I'm using my pencil now. I'm actually going to press down hard. And remember that these feathers, some of them are like triangles with rounded corners and some of them are more like a U-shape. So I'm just going to press down and I want you to notice how I make this stroke. There's some other feathers that go this way. So what I'm going to do is press down and lift off. 
press down and lift off. Press down, I'll do this slowly this time for you, and then lift off. Okay, because these feathers stand out a little bit more because they're layered one on top of the other. And then we're going to go back and just shade a little bit underneath the feather here. Just filling in this area all the way down. Okay, and then we'll go over here and then right in, making another little U shape. Lift off. And then just the same way as we're working on these feathers, we're just going to shade half of this feather, half of this one, and then the same thing with this one. Just starting to build up more of that 3D quality. We really want this to look like it's popping off the paper, okay? And now I'm going to go out and switch out my pencils. Make sure that you sharpen your pencil. And um, this parrot here is actually sitting on a little branch. And I want to come in here and just shade this little triangular area because this is part of the parrot's leg. And I'm going to show you how to draw this part in. Just remember that you want to take your pencil and you want to start where the feathers are and you want to pull that stroke down and then kind of dip in and out. So because this little, le uh, this little um, leg is coming out and then the same thing, this little stroke in here. Alright? And it's going to be shaded inside here because this is right underneath its little belly. Okay? And then this shape over here is actually its feet um, that are uh, holding onto a branch and so um, we want to also shade that in and so I'm going to show you how to do that is underneath on the underneath side it's going to be in shadow so I'm just going to go back and forth very lightly and I'm going nice and slow because that makes these little claws on here look three-dimensional same thing in here just going ahead and shading now right on the tippy tips we are going to press down because these little guys have claws, little, more like little toenails. And there's, there's another little curvy shape here. Okay, see that? And then you're going to want to take your pencil and create these little lines. Okay? These little lines across there like that, just to make that look more realistic. All right, that's really starting to come together now. And... And we'll just do some more strokes here. And also, the tail feathers, like I was saying before on the parrot, are really long. They're probably going to be going off your page. So all you need to do is take your pencil and just go ahead and press down for this tail feather. And then on the other side, you want to do the same thing, pressing down and then lifting off softly. Okay. All right, this is looking good. I think we can also take the pencil now and work on a few more details on some of these feathers in this area. And so I'm going to press really hard. And then I'm going to make a circular stroke and move up here. I am going to do the same thing with this one. Let's kind of make a circular stroke in here and up here. And then the same thing on this one. And really what I'm doing is I always look at my subject a whole lot when I'm drawing because the more you observe something, the more that you actually look at the subject that you are drawing, the more accurate that you're going to be. Because that's a lot of drawing is really just about practicing seeing. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing in here. Just press down and lift up. Press down and lift up. See that? And then the same. We're just going to bring a little bit more definition so some of these feathers really pop out. And then I'm just going to shade. At the top of the leg, I'm just going to make it a little wee bit darker because that is actually directly underneath these feathers in here. Okay. Now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to move on and create a little bit of some shading on this branch. And then I'm also going to show you how to create texture. So um, let me switch out one of my pencils here. And this part of the branch we're just going to 
leave it this circular shape here but then we're going to take a pencil and we are going to turn this pencil on its side go backwards and forwards and just keep shading the side here going backwards and we're going to do a gradation that's what makes this little branch look like it's three-dimensional so I'm going to also change direction a little bit and then I'm going to lay down some tone and all of a sudden I'm going to go a little bit softer and that means I take pressure off my pencil right in there okay and actually let, why don't we go ahead and extend this little branch and notice how I'm not drawing a straight line for a branch because if you were to go outside and look at a tree branch you'd see that it's kind of has a curvy wiggly line so that's what we're going to do is just take this pencil and kind of wiggle it up and down okay see that and then we're going to do the same thing on top okay so we just created this nice branch Go backwards and forwards look at that and just creating some tone on here and I'm going to change direction because remember we learned about cross hatching that's when you go one direction and then you take your pencil and do the other one. So we just created this branch that the parrot is sitting on right there. But now the fun part comes because we get to go ahead and build up a little more texture. So you want to take a sharpened pencil and right in this area where we already created some of the shading, we're going to go over the top with some wiggly lines, but we are not going to press down hard and I'm sort of twisting and turning my um, pencil. This might take a little bit of practice for you. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to create some bumpy texture on this branch. And so what you do is you kind of twist your pencil up and down and kind of all over, kind of randomly, and that'll make it look like little grooves are in this big tree branch that this parrot is sitting on. You can also take your pencil and make those circular strokes going round and round and round. Make sure you do this really slowly and this is going to create some bumpy texture right there on your branch. Okay, now this branch, this side of the branch has been, it's kind of like a cut off branch so I don't know if you've ever looked inside a piece of wood but it also has those little um, circles inside there and so we can just make some random squiggly lines for that but we didn't shade that part okay so there we have our parrot sitting on that branch now we are gonna also create another branch on the other side okay and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this we're gonna create one curvy line on one side so if we do it on here we also want to match it it's kind of like symmetry doing the other side right so this branch is kind of going off the page but then we really want to create some kind of a background to make the parrot look interesting so we've got a branch going this way so why don't we create some little tree branches with wiggly lines and these can be pretty random because tree branches grow all kinds of directions and how I like to do these is just kind of make a wiggly line and then I'll match it on the other side this is a really easy way to create branches of course you've got the big fat or large main one in the middle and then you have this little skinnier one going off here and that's exactly how tree branches grow okay and we'll do the same thing we'll put another one over here and then another one over here making these little wiggly lines and matching those and then why don't we go ahead and do another wiggly line up here and then we'll match it on the other side all right okay it's looking really good okay okay so now I'm gonna work on creating some leaves because we want to create some interesting little details and I'm going to show you a really easy way to create a leaf. I like to think a leaf is like a teardrop um, shape. So you start around here and then 
go ahead and match that. Of course, this one's kind of light, so I am going to go over it again because I want to make sure that you can see it. Okay, so there is the shape of a teardrop, and then you can go ahead and put a line through it. Okay, and then sometimes I'll add some little veins, just a couple to make it look realistic. So we have one leaf. Now, of course, when you look at leaves, you're going to see that some will be in the forefront. That means they're going to be in the front. And some, some others will be behind, so they look like they're overlapping. So I'm going to show you another way to do that. You're going to start right here. You're going to make the point, And then you're going to come around with the curve so it looks like it's underneath. Okay. Now, if you're needing to maybe draw, you draw the whole shape and then... If you want, if you're feeling like that will help you see the shape better. And then you can just sort of erase this part. And then I like to come and bring the line right in here. And then you can come right away and just erase this in here. So erases can be very handy sometimes. Okay. And then go ahead and just make sure you get rid of any eraser on there. So there we have two leaves. And already I just think that that makes the drawing look so much more interesting is just to add a couple of leaves on there and then I'm going to do another one over here and this one is going to be pointing downwards it's just basically a little teardrop shape and then another one pointing this way just remember that if you look in nature a lot of times things look very random you'll have leaves facing all different directions and that's what makes it look realistic putting another line through here another line up here okay and we may as well add a couple of veins which are just these curvy lines and then I think just for fun I'm gonna add an upside down teardrop right in here with a line through it and then some little veins okay so already we're making this look interesting by putting lots of these little teardrop shapes they are leaves okay and then over here on this branch, I'm going to uh, make some leaf shapes. Now you can just do a few, okay? So all different directions, little teardrop shapes that have lines through them just to indicate that this is a tree with some leaves. See that? Just a line through that teardrop shape, okay? And I'm also going to now look at this part of the painting, I mean, the drawing. And what we're going to do is just shade underneath this branch, just like we did on this one. We're going to go backwards and forwards. Okay, just adding in some shading underneath the branch is where it's going to be in the shade. Because normally the sunshine will be shining on top. And this makes the top of the branch just a little bit lighter. Okay, so going backwards and forwards, kind of a medium tone. You don't want to press too hard or too soft. And you can make sure that you go backwards and forwards just to fill in any little white patches on there and softening everything. Okay, so we have our tree branch right there. And then we also can do the same thing on even the little branches will have a little part of that that is also in shade okay and one side of these you can go ahead and shade them in just with a little bit right in here you can also take your paper towel and press it into your paper and make circular strokes if you want to soften some of that that'll help everything blend together really nicely Okay, and then of course we are going to take our pencil and then make some little circular strokes because this is going to create the texture of the tree bark right over the top. There we go. Just getting in some of that tree bark right there. And of course some of those random lines, that's where we take the pencil and we just make squiggly lines all over the top. So that definitely starts to look so much more interesting. Okay. All right, so now we're starting to really build this up. I'm gonna go back in and just really quickly put in a couple more details for you. 
and I want to go ahead and shade one side here of some of these feathers that are underneath these ones in front just by pressing down on my pencil and just filling in some of these gaps. You can also of course come back in with your paper towel just to blend part of this. And then I'm going to push this up a little bit my drawing because I want to show you how I'm going to work on some of these other feathers that are really long. We're going to do the same thing as we're just going to fill in half of that feather to give it some more definition. And then the same thing with this one over here. Just fill it in. And you of course can come in with your paper towel and begin to soften everything. Okay. Um, and once I've done that, I also am going to take my pencil and put a line by pressing it right in the center of those feathers. See that? So I'm pressing into the paper and then lifting off. So that really does help those feathers to look so much more realistic. Okay, so let's push this down again so we can just go back. So we're really starting to finish up the parrot now, just putting in a few more details. Um, if you want, you can also put a little bit of shading on the lead, on just one side. I think that this really makes these pop more. And I'm just using a very soft touch with my pencil going backwards and forwards. I'm going to go on the other side. And I would just do that on a few of these leaves. Helps these to look a lot more three-dimensional when we add a little bit of shading. And just remembering that you can also use your paper towel if you want to blend things. Okay. And I'm going to show you how I do that. So I just go around a circular stroke. So it kind of blends in with the whole leaf shape. And then also these ones up here, just going to go ahead and do that so everything works nicely together. All right. And I'm going to show you another detail that is uh, going to be nice for the leaves. Is on some of these little sections, we're going to go ahead and darken them. Just a couple, because it's going to make the leaves pop off the page, make them look more realistic. Okay, there we go. So there we have those leaves. All right, and I'm going to put a few more veins. And the veins are just these little curved lines that we want to place on here. Okay, so after that, one of the last things that I want to do is work on some minor details at the end of your drawing. You're always going to work on just finishing it up with um, some details. I'm going to take uh, my pencil and I'm going to do a little zigzag stroke on the back of the parrot because that's exactly what those feathers look like, little zigzag stroke. It makes it look like he has these little fluffy feathers. And especially if you look on the bird's head, you'll notice that it almost looks like he's got a crew cut or something. So we're going to go back and just do some zigzag strokes going all the way along here and also underneath here. Okay. Okay, so we are at the final stages now of just creating a little bit more texture on the um, bird. And I'm just going to use some curvy strokes here on the feathers and also some curvy strokes. Just moving my pencil up and down right around the eye so it does have a little bit of texture and detail right around there. And then at the bottom here, you can see that I've gone ahead and added a couple more leaves. And these ones are, have a different shape. These are long, almost like a sword shape. So you really just want to go ahead and add that in. 
And just remember that leaves do really come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and it's nice to add some variety to your drawing. And then you want to go ahead and go ahead and shade one side of those leaves. And of course you can use your paper towel if you want to go ahead and also soften and blend your shaded area a little bit. So that's all we have to do is just shade right over here. Okay. So there we are, all finished with our parrot. That was such a fun project. And until next time, um, that was really fun. And we will have a lot more interesting projects coming up for you. So stay tuned.